Now on the title, we are washing up some porcupine quills. So, quick disclaimer, I have children, so they might be loud and I'm not editing them out because I'm too lazy to do that. Also, um, this is my very first time doing this, so I'm, I'm just going to try and do this on my own. I looked up information on the internet on how to do it. I think I got it down. So, um, right yesterday I was traveling to my mother's house and on my way there, there was a porcupine on the side of the road and it had been hit. So, I hit the brakes super hard, <laughs> pulled over, and I had some things in my van that um, I had like in preparation for if this moment ever came because I have been looking out for a porcupine for a while now, like months. My son wants a roach for his grass dance regalia. Um, the only thing is, this is a Great Lakes porcupine. I didn't realize until a friend of mine pointed out to me that the hairs of our local porcupines might not be long enough that we need hairs from Western porcupines. So anyway, I didn't get enough hair for a roach i got some hair but it's all like really short but i got a whole bunch of quills so i have them in this bag here because the ziploc bag i put them in is pretty gunky because the the porcupine has a pretty large wound i would say it's kind of like slashed on the entire one side of its body so it was really opened up and there was like blood and gunk but the other half of its body um, had quite a bit of, you know, fur and like skin surface area to pull quills and fur out of. So once I got me a full bag of Ziploc quills, or <laughs> once I got me a full Ziploc bag of quills, I just realized like there is still like a whole porcupine worth of quills here and I don't need these, I'm not going to use them all. I've never done quill work before, so I still have to learn how to do it in the first place. Um, so I ended up just calling up a friend of mine who actually teaches kids how to do quill work. So she came and picked up the rest of that, and now I am going to clean them up. I'm not going to do everything today, you know, like the cleaning and the sorting, um, because I don't have enough time to do it today, and I'm pretty tired. Um, but I really want to get them clean today because I don't have time to attend to them tomorrow, and I don't want them sitting in this bag for much longer, you know, covered in like blood and whatever kind of fluids. Okay, so I am actually not going to pick through and separate, you know, the different size quills and hairs and stuff today. Some people will separate all of that before they wash them up. Um, some people, woo, some people don't. So I am just going to throw them in this pot here. This is full of hot water. I did, oh, you can see the steam. I did um, turn on the stove and heat it up a little bit. Um, probably just below boiling point. I think I'm actually gonna let it cool down just a little bit more before I put the quills in there. Um, you also need some dish soap. So I have both like the regular Dawn and I have this Gentle Clean stuff. This is what I used for the um, sheepskin fur anklets for my son. I also would suggest it for like leather and stuff. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and use this for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the quills in the water. I'm going to put some of this in there. Might as well just put some in there right now. And then once I get the quills in the water, I will let them soak in there for, I think, I think I learned about an hour, maybe like a 40, half hour, 45 minutes, an hour. I don't know for sure yet. The only source that I've seen that said how long to do it, they said an hour and then to like swirl them around and do another hour. And I kind of feel like that is too long. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I'm just, I'm going to check on them every now and then and kind of decide what I think is best. And then um, making sure to kind of stir them around, not with my fingers, with a utensil of some sort. And then 
I wanted to basically strain the quills out of the water, but I don't have a colander that is, like the holes are so big that the quills are gonna fall out, right? And I actually went looking for a colander with like tiny holes, like one of those screens. But I think that some of the quills are so thin that they might even go through that. So what I did is I grabbed some cheesecloth and I'm just going to put this over top of this and then kind of like lightly tip it over in the sink and let it drain through the cheesecloth. This cloth is obviously going to get a lot of quills stuck to it. That's okay, I don't mind. Um, and then once I do that and I get all the water drained out and it's just quills left in here, then I will lay them out on a paper towel or a bunch of paper towels actually and let them dry. So let's um, get started. These are porcupine quills. Did it die? Yeah. And Mama got all the quills off and they're very sharp. Oh, they're very sharp. Yeah. I don't want to touch No, no, don't touch them because they will poke you. So I decided to actually heed the advice that I had researched and let them soak for another half hour. Okay, so these have been sitting in here for about an hour, a little more, and I mean they look, they look pretty clean. They feel like they might be like a little sensitive, like they can bend. So I think that um, it's time to take them out of the water. They look nice and white, they look nice and clean, and I don't want to soak them for too long and have them be like ruined or I don't know if they stay like over malleable once you dry them. Look at, there's a quill coming through the cloth. There are so many quills just like poking out now. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these yet, but ooh, this one's good. Okay, so I started picking some out of the cheesecloth and realized that it's still like really, really soapy. So um, I think I'm going to like Pour some water in here to rinse it, and, like rinse them off. Let's get this off of it. So now I have a ton more quills stuck in the claw. And I'm just kind of like very carefully picking them out. Trying to be con conscious. Here we have this. I'm going to very carefully dump it out onto the um, paper towel. I don't want to drop any on the floor. And then I very carefully try to spread out the quills so that each of them have a chance to dry out fully. So I'm just going to lay some paper towel over the top and then check on it in a couple hours. Okay, so I have them sitting here on the counter. Oops, 
right there. That's about uh like quarter to nine. I was supposed to be in bed at night because I had to get up at like five in the morning. I'm going to let them sit here for a little while and then I don't know what I'm gonna put them in. I think I'm gonna grab like a shoe box because there's so many and put them in the shoe box before I go to bed. Clearly I'm like really tired. Look at me. So I'm gonna do that. Um, today's Monday. Tomorrow obviously is Tuesday and I have a big long day ahead of me because of thanks for work. So I will check in with you on probably Wednesday. Maybe I'll dig in on you know tomorrow night when I get home and kind of see how they're doing. If I do, I'll fill you in. Okay. Native American Heritage Month. Okay, today is Friday, and I think I started on Monday, and I have my box of quills here. I did manage to get just a little bit sorted on Tuesday. This took me like an hour to do, but that's all I got done. So when I was at, um, I actually went to like a craft night <laughs> when I was separating these clothes and my friend that was there gave me a helpful tip. So I'm going to try out this tip. So if you notice, my quills still have like a ton of fur all over them. So what I did when I was there was I took a little bit out, just like a little handful or whatever, and then I just slowly like picked through the quills. This is so damaged. This is like the only damaged one that I have. Weird. Anyway, I would slowly like pick through the quills and set them aside and then push the fur to one side and then just get rid of the fur and you know like the quills that didn't really weren't like a quality that makes any sense like they were too thin or short or whatever but what she suggested is to take them put them in water and then use some sort of wired tool and swirl the tool around and it should like tangle up the hair on the wired tool just leaving the, the um just leaving the quills so i have this whisk here she originally suggested actually the other side of a fly swatter like a fly swatter that has a like wired hoop for a handle but then she said a whisk could probably work too so i have a whisk here um, I'm gonna go ahead and just try just like a little handful first. So let's grab a, kind of a bigger one because I don't want to put them all in there and then it not work. So here we go. Okay. So here's some fur right here. That's a lot of fur. Um, I think what I want to do now is just try and pick this off. I'm going to try and put some more bigger quantity. All right. And then we have our whisk. So this is all I got in probably like five minutes. And I can do this in just a couple minutes by just like picking through my finger. So I don't know if I did this right. It's not working out for me though. I don't, it's just not working. I don't know if it's because of the type of tool I'm using. Like if I should be using like the back of, um, of a fly swatter because it isn't like several wires, it's just like one that's kind of folded in half. I don't know. I don't know. But um, I'm going to stop here. I'm just going to throw these 
in my little bag. Dry them off. And then I'm going to take these out and put them on the paper towel to dry and pick through by hand. So I'll get back to you soon. All right, so what I ended up doing, instead of beginning by picking each quill out, I grabbed a pile of quills and hair with some tongs, lightly shook the pile, and then let loose quills fall out of the pile. After moving the fallen quills aside, I would then periodically shake the pile again until the only quills left were the ones that were really stuck in the pile. Then I would pick those quills out of the pile. This took a while because I was also picking out quills that weren't keepers and I was keeping guard hairs. I don't know what I'm going to use them guard hairs for, but I couldn't bring myself to not keep them. <laughs> I even joke that maybe I'll make a grass dancer Barbie doll. Okay, so this is how much I got done in the same amount of time that I was stirring that whisk around in the pot. So, um, I guess I'll put them side by side and kind of compare. <laughs> I still have like a full like box, well like half a box here. <sighs> Wish me luck. Okay, I am giving up tonight. It's still Friday. I just thought I would check in real quick. Real quick. This is my bag of quills so far. I've also been collecting the guard hairs. There isn't very much and they're not very long. So I still have this much to go as well as, the, uh, well as the amount that I put in the pot when I tested the whisk trick. This is seriously going to take me like so long. I don't even know. To think that I didn't keep the entire porcupine. Like wow. So I'm pretty thankful I guess that I only took really a small amount of quills from this porcupine. I know this is a lot of quills, but I had an entire porcupine. And once I sat there pulling quills for, gosh, like an hour, hour and a half, I only had like a straight line, probably about this, eh, like an inch wide just a straight line about an inch wide and maybe like down the side of the porcupine's body where I could see just skin because you know once you pull the quills out it's just the skin right the rest of the body was still covered in quills and so, so I called up this lady I know after my sister mentioned like hey she teaches kids how to quill at the local school, one of the local schools, so I got a hold of her and I was like, you want this porcupine? Like, I already have way more that I need from it and I can't take on a project this large. I mean, I mean, um, would you like it? And so she came and picked up the porcupine and she was like, oh, the boys are going to love this. I'm guessing she's going to make a couple of students <laughs> hack at this porcupine and pull all the quills like oh I should have asked her her secrets for cleaning and separating the quills because I mean this is just so much this one's all white <laughs> anyway I'm tired I'm breaking for tonight I don't know if I will get to it again um, this weekend, again today is Friday, I have a whole bunch of homework to do this weekend, so I will check on you, you know what, you're watching a video, I'm going to check on you in one second. I'm literally wearing the same outfit that I was wearing in the beginning of the video. Hi, so today is December 4th, which would make it over a month since I began this video. And the reason that it's taken me so long to do this is, well, partly because I'm really busy and I've been ignoring this project for a beading project. <laughs> but basically, I have so many quills that it took me so long to get this done. Over a month, that is. Except I wasn't working on it 
all the time or a lot. I was actually only devoting maybe like two hours a week, if that, to it. Um, but I have all my quills sorted out, so let's go. Yeah. Look at all of these quills. So I got this many quills with the exception of um, ones that were too thin or broken or too small or whatever, I don't know. All I have to do now is just put them in some water with a little bit of bleach on them. I want to bleach them because A, the bleach might make them a little brighter, but it might uh, clean them up a little better too. Since when I did clean them, they were all covered in fur, I might have missed a few spots. I also collected guard hairs. So there aren't very many of them and they aren't very long. They're roughly just like the width of this Ziploc bag. So but yeah, I am not going to include the bleaching process in this video. It's just for one, I don't feel like doing it tonight and for another, I'm over it. I got these done. Um, it's really just going to be a, that big pot that I used in the beginning of the video and I'm going to put um, maybe like an ounce of bleach in a pot full of water so it's not gonna be very much bleach but yeah i hope you enjoyed the video i am so happy that i have porcupine quills now i've never done quill work of any kind before so i think what i want to do is when i do finally use these quills probably for a pair of earrings let's be honest um, I'll go ahead and vlog that too. I don't really have any plans for these either. Um, I was actually looking for, like I described in the beginning of the video, I was looking for guard hairs and this porcupine ended up not really working out for me for that. But at least I got three whole ass bags of porcupine quills. I think it'll probably all fit in one gallon to be honest. But yeah, anyway, when I finally make a craft out of them, I'll go ahead and vlog that so I can, um, I don't know, show the world what it's like to work for, with porcupine quills for the very first time. I'll stand back here so you can't see the rosacea. Okay. But yeah, anyway, I hope that was probably just entertaining. I don't think it would have been helpful. And I will see you on the next one. Bum and Peak Wabin.